let's talk about the creation of demon. Where do they come from? What's their, we'll get to what's their purpose. Um, so let's talk about their, their creation. So the creation of demons is described in various ways. Uh, there's one statement that says the mazikin, that they were created on the eve of the first Shabbos, the eve of the first Sabbath. That's, a, that's what it says in Perki Avos, in the Ethics of Our Fathers. Elsewhere it says that they are sort of the offspring, they are sort of like this uh, negative spiritual offspring that came about from Adam and Eve after they separated uh, following their sin. Following the sin of uh, Adam and Eve, and they were expelled from the, the Garden of Eden, there was, a per, there was a period of time where they were uh, separated from each other. And it says in other places that uh, demons are a result of that. Jewish, tr Jewish tradition teaches as well that when Noah, when Noah, was gathering all the animals onto the ark, and seven of the kosher animals, uh, two of the non-kosher animals. Rashi mentions very clearly that uh, there was also two demons that were taken to uh, sort of, I guess, prolong their existence, keep, their exist keep them in existence. Um, another, another place where we see demons uh, in, the, in the biblical text is that during the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel, there were three factions, three different groups with three different motivations as to why to build this tower. So one of the factions that wanted to go to war with God, it says that their punishments was they, they were transformed into demons. That's one of the things that, that took place. Um, in some uh, context, in some texts of Jewish uh, mysticism, becoming a demon is also uh, the destined punishment for some of the wicked. That could be like your you know, your punishment. Anyway, so how do they look? What's a demon look like? Um, so again, just for FYI, whenever we give a description of spiritual matters, we, al we always have to remember that these are anthropomorphic associations. In the same way that when we open up a copy of the Torah, we open up the Bible and it describes God as taking us out with a you know, a strong hand and an outstretched arm, or God spoke these words, or he uh, heard the cries of the people, that God does not have ears, does not have a mouth, does not have arms. These are, uh, you know, sort of borrowed terms in order that we can relate to it. And in the same way, when the, when the Talmud and our collective Jewish literature is explaining, you know, demons or anything spiritual, the, the terms that are being used are not meant to be taken in the most literal of sense. They, they basically are certain physical descriptions that are, uh, you know, that, that are related over in Jewish literature to sort of emblematically shape some sort of aspect of truth about uh, the nature of demons. So first of all, the Talmud says that the sheer quantity of demons outnumbers that of humans. It's considered actually a blessing that we aren't able to see them because we wouldn't be able to stand uh, seeing so many uh, of these creatures. Demons are sort of like, a, they're described as having sort of an intermediate or an intermediary uh, level between angels and, and human beings. They're described that, the Shadim are described that in three ways they are like angels and in three ways they are like uh, people. So they, they are said to have wings and fly from one end of the earth to the other, and they know the future. That's like the angels. And they also uh, eat, drink, um, and die, and reproduce, uh, at, just as humans do. Um, although in, in normal circumstances they are invisible, the Talmud actually offers uh, certain uh, diagnostic ritual as a means of sort of detecting them. So demons can also have the appearance of a human being as well. We mentioned the story of, uh, of King Solomon. That is also an option as well. Rashi actually distinguishes between the appearances of each genre of demons um, in, in various places. Now, their effects, various sources in, uh, in Jewish tradition say that the power of demons sort of shifts between you know, different hours of the day, different weeks, different uh, days of the year, times of the year. The Talmud says that evil spirits are, are more of a threat in the evening. They sort of prefer the, the, the night hours or, or whatnot. Also, demons are said to avoid groups. So it's like buddy system. You know, if you're, if I, if you're working in buddy system, then you have no, uh, no need to fear, fear the demons. 
Now, this is a this 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 next uh, uh, section that we're going to talk about is is something really really strange and really interesting as well. Okay, we're going to talk about demonic sightings in Jewish law. How how there are certain certain roles or certain situations where the proposal of, of, a, of an interaction with a demon is presented and how Jewish law would sort of treat that. Very interesting. Take a look. So in Jewish law, the concept of a demon comes up actually quite, uh, quite a few times. There's examples uh, uh, right, off the, right off the bat that were meant to avoid things, certain things, because of ruach ra, because of a bad spirit or bad presence. Again, the, the context isn't you know demons like goblins with horns and pitchforks. It's like a negative presence. For example, you know you take your nagelwasser in the morning. You, know, you have your the basin that you wash your hands with. So it says that the the water that you wash you know in, into that into the basin it shouldn't be disposed of in an area where people are walking. You know dispose of it in a place that's and no one's going to be around. Um, there are other things that were said that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't eat. You know, things that are uh, that were stored under a bed, uh, certain things that are like uh, garlic or whatnot that was left uh, peeled um, overnight. So it says that you shouldn't have them because of ruach ra. So again, the, the, as far as the practical implications to, to modern day, consult your local rabbi. But the idea is certainly is certainly there. 